Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to the eFolder Partner Chat webinar. Um, today's topic is Smart Money, Five Secrets to Getting More Vendor MDF. My name is Ted Holsey. I'm Vice President of Marketing with eFolder and your host for today's event. Um, before we go through the agenda, um, let me go over a couple let me go over a couple housekeeping items. Um, first of all, the agenda. I'll, I'll introduce our guest speaker in a moment. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, Lloyd Wolf, uh, one of our eFolder uh, e partner, is going to go over the five secrets of how to get more MDF from your vendors. Plus, he's going to provide a couple bonus secrets. So it's seven secrets in total. And then we're going to hopefully have a lot of discussion as we go through today's topic. Um, if, for those of you logged into the uh, GoToWebinar platform, you can ask questions as we go along. Um, Lloyd's going to be doing virtually all the talking today, and so I'm going to be monitoring the Q&A log um, as we go. So please ask questions as you go along, and I will be monitoring the Q&A and um, be asking Lloyd those questions as, as, we, as we roll along. Um, today's session is being recorded. Um, we will also provide you copies of the presentation, and you have two choices to access the audio on our, on our presentations. You can either stream it directly to your PC or dial in over the phone. Uh, the recorded copy of the presentation will also be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. So I want to thank all the eFolder partners uh, for joining us today, uh, and please stay tuned for the end of today's uh, webinar and discussion because we all have a special offer for existing eFolder partners at the end. So at this point, what I'd like to do is introduce our guest, Lloyd Wolf. Lloyd, can you hear me well? I can, Ted. Thank you. Okay. So welcome, Lloyd. Um, really excited to have you. Lloyd Wolf has been an eFolder partner for several years. He's one of our top performers. And Lloyd recently joined the eFolder Partner Council. So the eFolder Partner Council is getting together uh, next week, actually, in New Orleans for one of our first uh, gatherings together. There's 12 different companies who are going to be joining us. And Lloyd is one of the people who is graciously giving his time uh, to eFolder to share feedback on how we can improve the company, make it a better value proposition for our partners, and help our partners grow. So uh, we have an interesting topic in store today. Lloyd's going to talk about his experience with getting more vendor MDF and growing his business by partnering um, with his key vendors. Um, and he's got a pretty interesting story to tell because I think um, Lloyd, a couple years ago, may be where a lot of the folks who are on the line today were at some point, in, uh, where you maybe weren't getting your fair share of MDF dollars from your vendors or you weren't partnering closely with them to help you grow, grow your business. And so hopefully Lloyd's advice and secrets and tips he provides you today on this webinar can help you grow your business. And with that, let me turn the floor over to Lloyd Wolf. Uh, thank you very much, Ted, for that introduction. Um, just as some brief, a brief background for uh, those of you who don't know me, uh, I started Wolf Consulting Incorporated about 24 years ago. We provide computer networking and IT consulting services to small and mid-sized businesses in the greater Pittsburgh area. Predominant business model would be infrastructure managed services. Um, this topic is very interesting to me, and I learned much of what I know about the topic from Ted himself as well as some of my colleagues in my HTG peer group. Um, the slide that uh, Ted has showing here now is kind of a bottom line story of before and after uh, of my MDF experience. Uh, I started our company in 1989, and through 2011, I had a grand total of zero dollars uh, provided to us uh, from our vendors to help with marketing efforts. Um, everything was self-funded and I really didn't know any better. And it was at the end of 2011 that I spent some time with Ted at an HTG meeting when he taught me about the concept of MD MDF, uh, Marketing Development Funds, and where I also had a chance to talk to some of my HTG peer group colleagues who were also successfully uh, getting MDF funds where they kind of taught me that we could ask, go to our vendors with a marketing plan to sell our services and their products or services, and they would uh, provide matching money or, or some money to us to, to help with that effort. And uh, as we show here on the slide, in 2012, 
our company all up spent about $62,000 in general marketing and business development efforts. Uh, about half of that was on our website and SEO, Google AdWords type of funds. Uh, if I look at another part of it, we spent about $16,000 of our own money on other lead generation activities, and we were also able to get several of our vendors to contribute $14,000 uh, worth of their money toward those efforts. Um, so in the prior 22 or so years, we had $0. Last year, we had about $14,000, which was just a big difference and really enabled us to uh, help with our business development efforts. Uh, I've got a couple of tips, as Ted had mentioned to you. Uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about was uh, picking your lead horses, or we'll say picking your, your lead vendor partners. Uh, if I look back many, many years ago in our business, um, we were maybe spread a little too thin. And over the years, we recognized the value in standardizing our solutions on fewer vendors. Um, so we would we had standardized on sonic wall security appliances for our firewall and security appliance solution. We're standardized on Microsoft for operating systems and application software. We're standardized on eFolder for backup solutions. Uh, we're standardized on Dell for our hardware products for servers, desktops, and laptops. That enabled us to focus our efforts in terms of uh, new business development in terms of re managing our relationships with our vendors, we could spend more time with fewer vendors, have a deeper relationship with those vendors, made sure that those vendors knew who we are, what we were doing, what our business development plans were. Um, so by focusing on just fewer vendors, we were able to have a deeper relationship with them. When we did want to come to them and have a conversation about market development funds, uh, they knew who we were, what our business was doing, and what our plans were. Uh, for example, here, as I was mentioning, at Wolf Consulting, we're standardized on uh, Dell products for hardware, uh, SonicWall for security appliances, which is now a division of Dell, uh, Microsoft, and e Um So tip number one was uh, pick your lead horse, horses, focus on just a few vendors. Uh, tip number two is master the one-page memo. Uh, we should be able to uh, take our plan for our market development funds, what we're planning on doing from a marketing effort, and write down that plan. It's always a good idea to write down that plan. Writing down that plan just forces you to think about all of the key elements, including our goals, our budgets, and our timelines. Uh, Ted had taught me, he was a big believer in the, the one-page memo, and he taught that to me, and I've seen that be successful when we've approached some of our vendors for help with market development funds. Uh, just We were able to take a plan, literally get it on one piece of paper on our letterhead, provide a couple of sentences about our company background, provide a couple of sentences or paragraphs about our business development efforts in general, provide a couple of sentences or paragraph about a specific activity or campaign that we were going to do, provide a couple sentences that said uh, what the costs were and what Wolf Consulting was going to contribute and what we were asking the vendor to contribute, and finally also talk about what the result was going to be. Uh, by doing this campaign, we expect to acquire a certain number of new customers and with each of those new customers, we'd expect to sell X amount of servers, desktops, or laptops, Y amount of software licenses, Z amount of gigabytes of off-site storage. We're able to put that plan down into just a one-page piece of paper. And uh, it was great when Ted told me this secret because I was able to use it for a number of vendors. It was very helpful because sometimes I would have a good relationship with our key contact at the vendor. And they'd know a lot about us, but sometimes they themselves did not approve the plan. They had to go to others. So this one-page piece of paper by itself was able to represent our company as it was being emailed around or, or printed and passed around at one of our vendors' offices. So it could, on its own, represent who Wolf Consulting was, 
what we were planning to do with our business development efforts, the campaign that we were looking to do, and what the results were going to be. Um, yeah. So that, and, and I think, yeah, and I just, I'd like to make a comment or two. I, I think, you know, as Lloyd mentioned, the, the biggest value of the one-page memo is what it does for you to help you concentrate and focus your thinking. Or whoever on your staff is, is in charge of vendor relations or is your marketing person, it just forces you to think through, what am I trying to accomplish? And what resources do I have at my disposal and what am I asking for? And it's, it, and the other, so that's, that's the number one part of the value. The other comment I would make is that there's no wrong answers. The, the other thing that this memo does is it becomes kind of a negotiating tool because let's, let's face it, everything in life can be negotiated. And sometimes your original plan is not going to be ultimately what you execute. But by writing it down, you're going to make sure it's a really good start. But there's no wrong answers. There's no perfection here. You simply write it down, share it with your uh, channel account manager or key contact at the vendor, and that starts the conversation rolling. But Lloyd's exactly right. That there's inside of a vendor organization, there's always a chain of command. And um, a, a memo like this can be easily shared internally, and it's going to make you look good because it just by documenting your plan, you already stand out in the top 5% of all partner organizations out there. I mean, literally, just by taking the step of writing down a plan, you are night and day different than the rest of the channel, the IT channel. The IT channel, um, marketing is not a strong suit. This is why everybody's here on today's call and why this is an exciting topic. It's an area where the channel needs to, channel partners need to improve greatly. So just by writing down your plan, you, you, you night and day look different to the vendor, to your channel account manager, and to their chain of command. And then being able to be able to share this internally, it makes you look good and it makes your, it makes your channel account manager look like a hero with his boss, his or her boss, and with the rest of the chain of command. So uh, Lloyd's exactly right. I mean, this, this is, this is the first step to really getting things right in terms of getting a, a building your business with marketing and leveraging your vendors to do it. Right. Thanks for that extra information, Ted. Um, so uh, secret number two, master the one-page memo. Uh, moving along to our next secret, our next tip is multi-vendor solutions and funding. Um, we've been able to uh, put together initiatives that combine solutions from multiple vendors. Um, so we have a, a slide here that was the, the uh, welcome screen of a lunch and learn event that we did in November. Uh, we held it at a local Dave and Buster's. The title of the uh, informational briefing is what we sometimes call them. Uh, the title of the informational briefing is what the heck is this cloud thing? Or what the heck is this cloud computing thing? I mean, we found that many of our clients, many of our existing managed services clients, and many of the prospective clients that we were having conversations with had certain thoughts about the cloud uh, many of them thought that, that the cloud is this great, fantastic thing that is free and problem-free and low-cost, and they should go to that. Uh, other people thought, oh, the cloud is only for big companies, or the cloud is only for small companies, and there was just a lot of mystification out there. So we held an informational briefing for clients and prospective clients to just share with them some examples of what actually is this cloud computing thing. Uh, during that session, we talked. We pulled together technologies that are provided by many of the key vendors that we work with. So we talked about uh, firewall and security appliances. If a business has uh, a high dependency on cloud services, it's important for them to have good internet connections. It's important for them to have good firewall appliances, perhaps re firewall appliances that offer high availability solutions that could tie in multiple internet service providers. So that's where we brought in uh, Dell SonicWall as part of the uh, solution that we were talking to people about. Uh, we were also talking about Microsoft Office 365 in the portion of the session when we talked about hosted Exchange and hosted SharePoint. Uh, we also talked about off-site backups uh, as being uh, part of cloud technology that people are doing, even companies who are predominantly focused on on-premise solutions are using uh, cloud services for off-site backups, and we partner with eFolder for our, our backup solution and our off-site storage solution. So we were able to put together one event 
that brought together solutions from Dell SonicWall, from Microsoft, and from eFolder. And we were able to present to all three of those vendors our plan for putting together to the, the event what we were going to talk about and how we were going to talk about this technology to the attendees and that attendees walking away who then were interested in learning more about cloud services or using cloud services in their business would likely be buying products that were based on Dell, SonicWall Firewall Appliances, Microsoft Office 365, and eFolder solutions. So we were able to combine those three vendors together and seek MDF money from each of those vendors um, for the portion of the event that covered um, their particular topics. Um, so it really helped us recoup the vast majority of the cost for putting together that event in terms of the printing of the invitations. We actually created printed invitations that we mailed to the attendees or to the invitees. Uh, the actual cost of the printing, the envelopes, the postage, the event uh, venue itself at Dave & Buster's, um, some prizes that we gave away. So by tying together uh, those multiple vendors, we were able to add together funding from each of them. And Lloyd, I think just to make another comment, I, I think one of the things that a lot of partners over the years have expressed frustration around, to me at least, is they really dislike uh, vendors bringing MDF programming to them that are very product specific. You know, so you know, OEM server vendor XYZ says, hey, send out this direct mail campaign promoting this brand of product. And I totally agree with partners on this. I mean, this is, that is not how you go to market. You're not product focused in many cases. Sometimes you are, but in most cases you're not. And it really doesn't tap into the problems that clients are facing out there today. So what I love about what you did here with this particular uh, marketing event is not only that you had multiple vendors in, not only that you helped defray the cost by having multiple vendors, but you really focused on the key problem that clients are having, and therefore you're able to get a good result. People are, you were able to promote something that was educational, informational, not a sales pitch, but put education first, and you got the audience, and, and that's perfectly okay. So I think one of, part of picking your horses and picking your lead vendors is you do need to work with vendors who are a little more enlightened, or at least are convinced, you can at least convince them that, look, we're gonna take, here's the message we're gonna take to market, and we're gonna weave you in and it's going to result in sales for you, but you're not you're not out pushing product because that rarely works with clients. Yeah, absolutely. I would say if you were someone sitting at this event, um, you would have heard things like uh, the importance of uh, firewall appliances and security appliances, and you would have heard about maybe hosted email or hosted SharePoint, and you would have heard about offsite backups. But we were not hitting people over the head for the entire uh, two-hour event. Uh, with particular brand names of our vendors. Uh, exactly. They were certainly mentioned. They were kind of in the footer on our welcome screen. They were in some of the discussion points, but it wasn't just, uh, you know, every single slide wasn't pushing a particular vendor's product. That was more the backdrop. All right. And, and a couple, I just want to remind everyone, if you do have questions, please ask them. But, but Norman uh, asks, I'd like to read one of the one-page wonders. <laughs> Any chance of getting a PDF? So, um, we're going to share the slides, but I'll also, uh, with, with Lloyd's permission, send out a copy of his memo just as a, uh, as a guide into like, what are the main things that a one-page memo um, should include. So, Sure, happy to do that. Okay. Uh, if we move along to our secret number four is write down and communicate the results. Uh, so the, the discussion with the the vendor does not end with, uh, you know, mom or dad, can I please have some money? Uh, we need to go back to them and communicate uh, the results that we uh, were able to achieve through the campaign that we did using some of our funding and some of their funding. Uh, so I found that uh, a lot of, as I've been, as Ted had taught this to me, I'm happy to share it with everyone else, and it still would surprise me um, when I talk with some of the vendors that we share this with, that they tell me they don't often get this kind of feedback from other partners that they work with. Um, so what Ted has here on a was a, a sample email message that I sent him. 
that I had sent to our Microsoft uh, partner territory manager where I was just sharing with her, we were having a conversation about something else and it just kind of tied in. I just said, oh, and by the way, I wanted to follow up on the marketing campaign that we did in December and January. Peter is one of our account managers. We'll be placing an order with Ingram Micro this week for about $9,000 in Microsoft Windows Server, Exchange Server, and Office licenses uh, for one of the new clients that we acquired from the campaign that we had done in January with them. And then also mentioning last month we sold 25 new open business licenses for Office 2013 to a client that we had acquired from a campaign last year. So just a way to tie into specific dollar amounts in products that we've sold that tied back to the activities that we did with the MDF fund, uh, the campaigns that we had, so that I'm trying to set the expectation or set the, her mindset in that the next time I come to her and say, hey, we've got this idea for this event and I need X hundred or, or X thousand dollars, I want her in the back of her mind to remember that, well, last time we did that, and the time before that, and the time before that, I always sold ten times the amount of product that they gave us in MDF. Uh, and the only way she'll know the results that we got is if I communicate them to her. And we did that the same with uh, for these particular events that we did recently with eFolder, with Microsoft, and with uh, Dell SonicWall, uh, we made sure we shared the results of that campaign with all three of the companies and multiple people even within the companies. Right, and I, I make a couple comments here. The it, you know just it never ceases to amaze me that sometimes partners forget to do this. I mean, it really is rather disappointing. Uh, when somebody, the first thing you see back from a partner is, um, hey, you know, process my reimbursement and send me my reimbursement cash. And it's not, hey, this is how many, uh, you know, opportunities we created and how much business we closed. So just keep this in mind. I mean, it, it all, part of it comes down to, under, you know, building a deep relationship with your vendors means you understand the world that, your vendor sales rep is coming from. And rightly or wrongly, the way the vendor universe is structured is results matter. And everybody's on a huge treadmill to grow the business. And um, really, when, when vendors invest MDF, what they're looking for is they're looking for qualified leads, definable business opportunities, and closed business. It's perfectly okay to say, look, we did a lunch and learn seminar, we got five qualified opportunities, and we've, we've only closed one of them, and it's worth $5,000. It's perfectly okay to say that. I mean, don't, don't fabricate the results. Tell the truth. Be honest and open. But, you know, because everybody understands that, okay, you generated five opportunities and you closed one, there's a high likelihood the other four are going to heat up over the next two to, two to nine months and become business as well. But um, so that's one comment to make is just understand that your channel account manager, the people at the, on the approving end of things on the vendor MDF, that's what they're looking for is leads, opportunities, and sales. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, and then there's no – the other comment I would make is there's no, there's no perfect formula. Here Lloyd's sharing um, uh, an email exchange. Uh, Lloyd's also sent me a memo showing his e-folder business growth. He's shown me, you know, results from prior marketing campaigns we've done together. There's no magic formula on how you document it. It's the goodwill gesture of closing the loop with your vendor partners and saying, hey, these are the kinds of results we've achieved. Here's what, and it's also another dimension to say, here's what didn't quite work well with the campaign, and here's what we learned from it. And that's what we're going to change next time we come to you for MDF, right? And so that's, that's another part of the conversation is showing a, a culture of continuous improvement around marketing where you're trying to continually get better and better invest dollars for better ROI. So um, just a couple other additional observations I would make. So, yep, Absolutely. Uh, let's see, moving along here to our tip number five is build your brand first. Um, and Ted alluded to this whenever we were talking about the informational briefing or the lunch and learn that we did. Uh, where we brought together a few different, few different vendors, um, 
And you know, we're talking about a couple different technologies, but again, we weren't actually out in front in each of the attendees' faces throughout the entire event pushing a particular vendor's named product. I mean, that was more secondary. We're talking about solutions uh, first. Um, also, I have here an example of building our brand was we did some radio ads on the local business radio station in December and January of this year. Uh, we, we've tended to do them over the past several years. Um, the ads are kind of revolved around the theme that December and January are often a time for businesses looking back at the prior year and making plans for changes for the upcoming year and of solving problems related to your computer network, your employee productivity, your network security, things like that are on your New Year's list of things to do, to call Wolf Consulting, schedule an appointment, we'll sit down and have a conversation. Uh, so as many, uh, we had several different ads that we ran kind of rotating between them, um, but we were not out in the radio ad actually saying, would you like to buy Dell computers, would you like to buy SonicWall appliances? If you want to place an order for e-folder off-site storage, call Wolf Consulting. You know, we were focusing on Wolf Consulting. We were talking about uh, solving problems. We went to the vendors with our one-page memo and with our plan that we were going to promote helping businesses solve problems. We were going to promote Wolf Consulting, and that with every new client that we would acquire, that we would likely sell to that client a Dell SonicWall firewall appliance. We would likely sell some Microsoft software licenses, and we would likely sell uh, on-site backup software and off-site data center storage. Based on past history, we could show that we've done that time and time again, and we'll continue to do it in the future. We just needed to get some more leads, some more conversations with people. Um, so these particular ads that we ran focused on the Wolf Consulting brand first, not a particular vendor technology, but we committed to the vendors that as we acquired new clients, we would implement their solution. Uh, Ted has an example here up on the screen of an email message that I had sent him back at the beginning of December, which was an actual link to the radio station and a copy of the radio ads, so he could actually hear for himself um, several of the 60-second spots that we did. Right, and and again, it's you know I don't want to be a broken record here, but what did I immediately do with these? I immediately forwarded them to my boss and to our VP of Sales and to the account team that let manages Wolf Consultant things and say, hey, look, this is awesome. Look what our partner is doing. So, you know, sharing this information allows us to share internally to see the success our partners are achieving. Uh, so moving along, I think Ted, I think that was the official five that we said we were going to talk about with everyone, but we've got more. Yeah, and, and before we before we dive into this one, kind of a relevant question. David asks, for the uh, November event, uh, what kind of – I think he's talking about the, um, uh, the briefing you did, the informational briefing. What kind of financial support was provided in, by each of the vendors? What other forms of vendor support were provided? And in general, what vendor support can we expect uh, for a 10 to 25 client presentation? Well, I, I can speak to our particular event in November. Um, I don't have all of the numbers right in front of me, but I bet I would say in round numbers, we probably spent about $2,000 on the event. Um, a fair amount of that was we actually did printed invitations instead of email invitations. Uh, we actually did nice printed invitations, uh, put the invitations in envelopes, put regular stamps on the envelopes, mailed them out, and then our inside sales team would call people and follow up on, quote, the in, I'm calling to follow up on the invitation that we sent you. Um, so we had some expense with the actual printing company for printing those. We had some expense with Dave & Buster's. They charged us several hundred dollars to have their, uh, their room for the afternoon. And then we also gave all of the attendees a $10 gameplay card, a little bit of a, a, a prize for uh, sticking around. We gave those out at the end of the, of the session. Um, so all in, I think we probably spent about $2,000, and uh, we were able to get $500 from eFolder, $500 from Microsoft, and $500 from SonicWall. Um, so we got our vendors to pay for $1,500 of the $2,000 event. 
And, and Lloyd, how many people attended? Um, what, what kind of business results have you seen follow on from it? Yep, I, I think we probably had, uh, in round numbers, probably 30 people register for the event. Uh, we probably had about 24 or 25 show up, so a handful of people did not show up. Um, and I can definitely say that uh, we closed some uh, some Sonic Wall sales and some Microsoft Office 365 sales and some e-folder offsite backup sales for both existing customers who were looking at implementing new or different technology. And we also onboarded two brand new customers, so they were prospective clients at the time. It was helpful for them to kind of see our people in action and to sit in a room with other people that were already customers. And within two weeks after the event, we had signed two new customers. Um, and we're still actively talking with at least three others from that event. Um, so I mean, if we ended up getting, we got you know, three new customers definitely out of those 25 who, um, or out of the 25 attendees, they were probably, uh, say, two-thirds existing customers, one-third prospective new customers. So maybe we had about eight prospective customers there. Out of those prospective new customers of the eight, we got three of them to sign up to be clients. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of a guy who would love to have gotten eight for eight. Uh, but even going three for eight so far has, has generated enough business that more than paid for the event, got us back our return on our investment, got our vendors back a return on the investment that they helped share with us. Yeah, and I think, you know, just a comment on ROI and what vendors will pay for. I mean, I think one can look at the event that Lloyd Consulting did, or Wolf Consulting did, and confidently say, I mean, that that event probably had a 5 to 10x ROI. And, you know, just from the in three new clients that are managed services clients are going to be throwing off, you know, over a 12 to 24-month period tens of thousands of dollars of revenue uh, for Wolf Consulting. And, you know, judging from what I know about the cost of a SonicWall firewall and Microsoft software and eFolder cloud backup, I mean, there's a massive ROI for... Um, you know, massive ROI for those vendors as well. So, you know, there's people will throw around ROI metric numbers, but really, the to be quite honest, in my worldview, you know, from the vendor perspective, what you want to see is um, you're getting back like a two to three x of money invested. Absolutely, certainly, because you can only measure, like in this case, three new clients for sure. A handful of prospects bought, you know, ended up initiating some new projects or some new services. So you can say confidently we can measure those three clients, but there are all the other five prospects. Those guys are going to heat up over months or years, and they're going to come in. And Wolf Consulting is out there building its brand and 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 driving more and more presence in the marketplace. So um, the key thing is vendors just want to see results. They want to see this methodical process around documenting what you're trying to do. Uh, executing well, closing the loop, sharing the results, but it doesn't need to be some outrageous, you know, 10, 30, 10, 20, 30 X type ROI for people to continue to invest. It's much more reasonable because uh, every day we're out doing the same thing and, you know, you have to have really realistic expectations and what you want is execution and not, you know, you know, you want execution out of your partners and that's, that's really what Wolf Consultant consulting was doing here. So. And, and by tying in those, those multiple vendors, I think we were able to get more money pulled in than we would have by approaching any one vendor. Uh, and by combining the vendors' uh, funds with our own internal funds, we were able to put on a much nicer event um, than our budget would have allowed if we had had to self-fund the entire event. Um, so I'd just say, in that kind of case, everybody was a winner. Wolf Consulting, Dell, SonicWall, eFolder, and the people who attended. They, they all learned something, some business was generated, and everyone was a winner. Uh, I think if I move on to, to our tip number six here, uh, we titled it, Ask for More Until You Are Embarrassed. Um, and the important thing here is to, is to be bold and to think big. Um, I might suggest to our attendees here that they ask for more MDF than they think 
may ultimately be approved. Uh, Ted, you had talked early on about everything's a negotiation oftentimes. So instead of starting with a low number, I mean, start with a higher number with your plans. Uh, maybe you'll get that amount of money, or maybe you'll get a little bit less. Um, but I'd ask, uh, I'd ask for more. Um, you'd, you'd always be willing to accept a little bit less. Um, so many times as I've been learning more about the, the MDF process from Ted and from some of my colleagues in HTG peer groups, um, and as I talk about with some of our, our vendors, they, they tell me about other companies who are, uh, you know, kind of asking for MDF maybe on a regular basis and not actually producing uh, consistent results from it. Uh, but by producing results from the funds that you do ask for, and as we've already talked about, the tips for sharing the results and writing them down and communicating those results, that helps you in the future. So the more that you do that, the more successful that you are, uh, the more money you're able to ask for, and the more likely you are to be approved. Um, now, uh, Ted, I, I forget the words that you used uh, when you were kind of teaching this to me um, over a year ago, was kind of... Um, asking for more than your fair share? Yeah, I mean, I think that what I've always been amazed by, um, you know, I've been, you know, before eFolder I was with SonicWall, and so I've been at the kind of the, had my finger on the MDF approval button for for many years now, and what I'm always surprised by is that it's a rich get richer type situation where the bold, the thorough, the people with a lot of follow through, they're, they get way more than their fair share um, of, M, of MDF. And, you know, every vendor struggles with the fact that MDF is underutilized by partners in general. But what you do see is that the MDF that does get spent, it gets highly concentrated in the partners that, that follow the, the secrets and tips that Lloyd is sharing today. And, you know, you see it that partners get way more than their fair share than their business warrants in general, if you were going to look at it scientifically. But that situation continues because they're the partners that bother to ask, and they're the partners that bother to ask for big. And you also see it in the territories that, you know, at SonicWall I was always amazed that the territories that had the best, uh, the most uh, MDF utilized by that territory were always the top performing territories. And, and ultimately what you see is even if you could say, you know, objectively speaking, some partners are getting more than their fair share of the MDF pie, what you would see over time is that those partners would consistently be the top growing partners with that vendor's particular product line. So um, be one of the partners who's getting more than their fair share. Get out on thin ice, skate out on thin ice, and be bold in what you ask for. Um, the thing I always I talk about embarrassed here, and I, this is some coaching I provided to Lloyd a couple years back, is that I, always, I once learned from my bosses that in a negotiation, until you almost feel embarrassed about your position if you win, you're not asking enough. And I think the same goes for MDF. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, if you're an e-folder partner, you're going to be requesting MDF from me. And no, I mean, I understand this, but I will appreciate somebody with a bold plan that has a good plan. So, you know, you're never, it's never wrong to do so. so. Yep. Excellent. Uh, on to uh, tip number seven, uh, even better, plan, don't ask. Um, so I would say I think most of the folks or many of the folks here on the phone today might be business owners or senior managers uh, who are providing IT consulting services to their customers. Um, I think if anybody came to me with a, with a plan that said, I need a dollar and I will return to you $3, $4, or $5, I will do that all day long every day. Um, so that's the kind of person I want to be when I go to our vendors and say, can I please have $500? Can I please have $1,000? If I can get back to them a high return on their investment, they'll do that all day long every day. And it's not that that's unfair, as we talked about getting your, un, you know, your more than your fair share of the pie. It's just we're going to produce better results for them. So they'd be crazy not to go along with us. Um, so along the lines of tip number seven here is plan, don't ask, is instead of just uh, – talking with your vendors about a one event uh, idea or a one campaign idea, to tie that into a plan for an entire year um, and get the vendor to commit to delivering a certain amount of money over the course of a year 
and then a campaign or an event just fits into that activity for that month or that quarter. Uh, if we were to go to our, our vendors and say, this is our plan for the year, this is how we're going to acquire uh, new businesses, we're going to be having X number of conversations with prospective customers, we're going to be having first appointments with them, we're going to be having second appointments with them, we're going to be doing proposals. And it's a lot of work and ultimately we're going to onboard one or two new managed services clients each month. And with each of those new managed services clients, we're going to implement security solutions, we're going to implement software licenses, we're going to implement backup and off-site storage. Um, we tie that into here's what the work we're going to do over the course of the entire next year so that when we come to them in March and ask for money for some, some matching money for radio ads or for a lunch and learn event or for some other types of activities that we might be doing, it's just part of the overall plan that we told them that we were going to be doing and we're executing on that plan. It's not just kind of something out of the blue that came off as a one-time shot that we're going to, quote, ask for money. Um, as we have here on the slide, we're going to get into an annual or quarterly rhythm to institutionalize the funding. It's something that happens on a reoccurring basis as opposed to just uh, ad hoc or one-off types of events. Right, and I, and I think it's, you know, just like in, in all of your businesses, you're trying to drive recurring revenue, you, you should be thinking strategically about getting recurring MDF as well. Um, you know, I think over the years, I've seen partners bristle at the, the business planning process. Um, you know, the, the, you know, sometimes people don't have an expectation that it's any of the vendor's business, you know, what the plan is. And, you know, that's a disappointing reaction, I think, to the need of vendors to kind of plan their pipeline and where the revenue is coming from. I mean, at the other side of that table is a salesperson who's trying to make a living, and it's a pressure cooker type job, and it's a tough job. You need to, if you want a really good working relationship with your channel account manager, you need to know and understand how they're compensated, what goals they're trying to achieve, how you can potentially align your goals together for a win-win situation. And again, it's, it's not... Um, there's no wrong answers in, in business planning. It's the, the process itself will yield the result, whether or not the original plan is off by 5% or 25%. Um, it's just that getting in that rhythm with your vendors is going to help the person at the other side of the table get their mission accomplished, which is to grow their business with their partners. Um, you're going to grow more effectively because you're concentrating your efforts, but you're also going to get in return things like important benefits like consistent uh, MDF funding over time. Okay. Um, so, that, so that was tip number seven of, of seven there. And if we if I kind of circle back to that first slide that, that you showed, Ted, that just had the zero dollars for 23 years and, and they back you know, had some money uh, last year, I mean, uh, I only wish, Ted, that I had met you 20 years ago <laughs> and you had told me about this. Um, so when you asked me if I'd participate in this, this webinar today, I was kind of happy to do so as kind of part of my pay it forward, uh, you know, pay, paying it forward to other people. I mean, I had no idea for more than 20 years, you know, I, when we were selling these vendor solutions anyway. I mean, we, we were going to be selling them anyway. I had no idea that I could go to them and just share with them my plan and that they would contribute money. Now, certainly we contribute money, too. We contribute dollars in terms of actually writing checks to, you know, to venues or to printing companies or things like that. We also write checks to our employees for the work that they do in putting together these events and these initiatives. Um, that sometimes gets lost in the in the, the conversation with, with the vendors when we say we're going to put together this event and it's going to cost $2,000. I mean, it cost $2,000 and people wrote checks for $2,000. Uh, but we also had several people working many days of time putting together that event. Uh, but again, we probably would have done those things anyway. Uh, so by having the vendors contribute money, we were able to have more events than we otherwise would have. We were able to have grander events than we otherwise would have. And ultimately, it was less money contributed from Wolf Consulting than it otherwise would have. Um, 
So, Ted, I'm not sure where you were for the first 20 years of my business, but I'm certainly <laughs> glad that we're partnering with you and with the eFolder now. <laughs> yeah. the, the feeling's the same. Uh, we appreciate your partnership and support. Um, so, you know, that's a, I mean, it's a really kind of a dramatic before and after situation, and I think probably many of you on the phone today are, are looking at this slide and saying, that's me right there, And but do I have the story on the right? And, and what I want to, um, before we kind of go into formal Q&A mode, I, I do want to... Um, invite um, any eFolder partners to start using MDF. Uh, to be quite honest, um, uh, we, we don't have a very formal MDF program. And in fact, this might be your first time you've ever even heard about the opportunity with eFolder to do MDF. And that's by, you know, that, that is by design. It, um, you know, to Lloyd's credit, he's been using the eFolder MDF program before the program even existed, just to, just to prove that it's all about being bold and asking. Um, eFolder as a company, we are going to make a more formal MDF program and put it out in the market, but we're not going to bury it in bureaucracy. And it's really simple. Um, it, you know, there are dollars available today for partners who ask and who par for partners that have a game plan. And um, what I've put together is a uh, very short survey monkey that serves the same purpose as the one-page memo. So I'm, I put together a survey where I'm asking you all the questions that I think you should address in a one-page memo. Hopefully you've got the one-page memo, it's your plan, and you're just copy-pasting from the, the one-page plan into the form. But, but for everybody who's on today's uh, webinar who is an eFolder partner, um, you, you know, make a, make a submission, make a request, and we will, we will, we will uh, honor it under good faith and, and take it under consideration and, ta and go through it with each one of you and, and approve them um, if, it's if it's a plan that makes sense. So um, I, we will be sending out this link, but it's basically surveymonkey.com slash s slash eFolderMDF if you want to get started right away. But otherwise, we'll put that in, the, in an email to you. And if you are not yet an eFolder partner, this is just one of the many benefits of being an eFolder partner, the way we collaboratively, collaboratively work with our partners to help them grow their businesses. So if you're not yet a partner and you want to engage with one of our uh, partner consultants, um, just go to efolder.net slash join, and you can uh, get the process started there. Um, so with that, let's, uh, we've got a couple more minutes for formal Q&A. So I've got at least um, two questions in the Q&A log. Keep them coming, everybody. Um, but David asks, uh, in your experience, who are the best and worst companies for MDF? And do RMM and PSA um, vendors also offer MDF. Um, so, Lloyd, in any any reactions to, you know, uh, well, maybe maybe not the worst, but who are some of the, who are some of the best? Let me tell you who's the worst. No, um, I would say, uh, as I had, had said one of the earlier slides uh, when I talked about kind of uh, picking your horse and, and picking your lead vendors. I mean, we have really standardized on just a few key vendors. Uh, at Wolf Consulting, and, and that's Dell for hardware types of products, SonicWall for the security appliances, Microsoft on application software and operating systems, and eFolder for offsite storage. Um, I've been able, I've been successful at asking or presenting to each of those companies plans for business development and campaigns, and I've been successful in getting MDF funds from them. Um, I know some of my colleagues in HTG peer groups have been very successful at uh, with HP, um, that HP has a formal program based on your your partner level um, in their partner pro based on your level in their partner program, getting set amounts of MDF money um, either per year or even down to per quarter. Um, I have any of the vendors that we've approached have have given us funds, and they've all been pretty easy to work with. Um, so I really don't have any horror stories or anyone to say don't. You know, don't use a particular vendor. Um, I don't know of anyone that's got any MDF funds from an RMM uh, vendor or a PSA vendor. No, it's an interesting idea. You know, probably uh, you know ConnectWise will be the first to do it. But um, you know, I, I guess I, I would make the observation that um, the the important thing when you're talking about your lead vendors and your lead horses is to start with the vendors that are strategically important to you before you even have the MDF conversation. 
I mean, MDF is a sign that you've got a strategic relationship with uh, a vendor, but it's not in principle a strategic issue. What is strategically important is that for the clients that you're focused on, the verticals you're focused on, the size of clients you're focused on, that you've got key vendors from a product and service and software perspective that are key suppliers to you. And invariably, those partners, those vendor partners will have MDF programs. The important thing to do is to make sure you go deep and understand their programs. Um, I've seen a lot of programs in my day, and they all are overly bureaucratic, probably, than they should be. Nevertheless, if, you, if HP is an important vendor to you, spend the time with your channel account manager at HP to understand the program. Invest the time to understand their program, even if it's not perfect. Because if you're going to be doing something quarterly with HP, for instance, you want it to be a rhythm. If you only do it once a year, you're going to forget everything you learned. So you want to get consistent. You want to go deep. You want to learn each vendor's programs. But start out with, don't go work with a vendor just because they have a good MDF program. Work with vendors that have key, supply you the key things you need, and then identify the, the vendor partners that have good programs and that you've studied closely, that you well understand, and then start working with them. And if the process is, is totally painful and a waste of your time, that's, you can disengage and go work with somebody else. But, but, but you know, start out with the strategic relationships and then find then MDF becomes a tactical consideration that can be leveraged. Um, Joseph wants to know, how did, how did you engage your clients and prospects to meet, um, you know, I guess, so how did you engage your clients and prospects to uh, attend the uh, executive briefing event? Was it a luncheon? My guess is that you already meet with your clients on a weekly or monthly basis. So maybe just talk a little bit about how you drove attendance. Yeah, I, uh, I would say um, it, this particular event, we invited both existing managed services customers as well as uh, prospective customers that we've um, already been having conversations with as part of our, our general business development efforts. Uh, we printed uh, invitations, uh, just a, a small, uh, sl slightly smaller than 8.5 by 11, kind of a, a folded type invitation that just talked about the event, uh, what was going to be discussed, uh, when it would be held, where it would be held, and mailed out those invitations, uh, bought the, um, the font that looks like a handwriting font, uh, where some of the letters are different from word to word, so it didn't actually look like we printed the printed the envelopes um, off the laser printer, but we did. Uh, if, you, if you looked at it, you thought somebody hand wrote it, and we applied regular postage stamps to it. Um, and then we had our ex our account managers who help manage the relationship with our existing customers uh, called the the each of the main contacts for our existing customers and extended a personal invitation to them to attend the event. Uh, again, it's kind of a warm call instead of a cold call. It's saying I'm calling to follow up on the invitation that we sent you. Um, many more phone calls were made to prospective new customers. Those were done by um, the two folks that work on our business development team. And they called each one of the prospective customers that we mailed the invitation to and just had a script to follow that says I'm calling to follow up on the invitation that we, we sent to you. Um, some people would say they didn't remember receiving the invitation, so we'd say, could I take a minute to tell you what it was about? Some people would say, I've still got that here on my desk. I'm thinking about attending. And it was just a, a premise for the phone call, if you will. Uh, we kept a roster of who said that they were, who they uh, responded and said they were going to attend. And then uh, two days before the event, we called everyone who said that they were going to attend to remind them of the event. Awesome. That's it. I mean, that's that is the magic formula for putting together events. Um, so excellent job. Um, so Joseph has a follow-on question: Do you recommend vendors to take part uh, in your event or any event? Um, um, I, I I do know of some of my colleagues who have had someone from the vendor actually participate in the event. Um, although my experience has 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 that's not happened mostly just to logistics. It's not that they wouldn't be interested in attending, uh, but our Microsoft territory manager is, you know, in Pittsburgh on a rather infrequent basis. Uh, Ted, you're not in Pittsburgh very often. Um, our our Dell and SonicWall folks are not here very often. Um, 
So we, it, it just didn't really come up. But I, I do know some of my colleagues who have had a vendor actually attend, but I don't think that that's, that's pretty typical. Yeah, it never hurts to ask, and it also depends on kind of it de depends on the event topic. Um, you know, I, I think we, I, you know one of the territories at SonicWall, for instance, the the channel account manager he liked to get out in the field and go to a lot of his partner events because he wanted to see things firsthand how things went. Um, he wanted to be an extra set of hands. He wanted to help present the content. And it, it, it just really all depends. I mean, sometimes you have events that are slight, of a slightly more technical nature, so getting a pre-sales engineer in there to, to do like a technical demo might be in order. And it all just depends. What you, what you, make, what you want to make sure never happens, though, however, is you never want the, a vendor person to get in the way of all the goodness we talked about on today's event. Lead with your brand. Focus on multi-vendor solutions. Focus on client problems. You never want to do an event and then have the thing get hijacked by your vendor and turn it into a sales pitch because then all of the excellent work you've done could be ruined. So you do need to, um, it's good to invite your vendors, see if they want to attend. Sometimes, I mean, I've done, I've done lunch and learns with eFolder partners where I literally sit fully in the back of the room and I sit there and eat my steak and I, no one ever talks to me the entire event and I sit and watch. And that's perfectly okay. Those are partners who we're trying to do like lunch and learns every month with. So I wanted to make sure that they do a good job doing it. But I didn't need to be on stage. So it's important to invite your vendor. It's important to also control uh, how they're involved and maximize their impact they can make if they uh, can help deliver the content in an interesting sort of way. So with that, I don't see any more uh, questions in the Q&A log. <clears throat> and we're at the top of the hour, so uh, I want to thank every all of the eFolder partners um, for joining us for today's event, and thank especially Lloyd Wolf from Wolf Consulting for being our special guest and providing so many insights today. Lloyd, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. I was happy to participate. Okay, everybody, this concludes today's eFolder Partner Chat webinar. Um, have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.